Out of all the places a human can be, for most people, inside a cave is probably the worst place to possibly be, tied with in a volcano and Gary, Indiana. Don't get me wrong, caves are truly beautiful sometimes, but really that implies you can see them by the use of man-made light. Naturally, caves are terrifying because you can see almost nothing, and your weak human senses aren't really helping you either. So, logically, if you're blind in a cave, you have a very likely chance to fall down some kilometer-deep crevice or simply be eaten by some cosmic horror. But of course, nature perseveres. Even down in caves, there are animals who live strictly underground. This would seem impossible, but these creatures, known as troglofauna, still persist. Of course, not all cave dwellers are created equal. Some animals go hardcore and live entirely in the parts of caves that have absolutely no outside light, known as the dark zone. The animals that live in bleak darkness 24-7 are called troglobites, meaning cave livers, or stygiobites if they live in water. Alongside the cave livers, there's also the cave lovers, or troglophiles. These animals don't really care if they're in a cave or not. Sometimes they are above-ground species who live entirely throughout the cave, other times, they can live in a cave, but return for some other reason. But either way, troglophiles are perfectly capable of surviving in the cave. Others aren't as lucky, and although they might sleep or shelter in caves, they can't permanently live there. These are called troglozines, cave strangers, and include many of the cave's more common and larger residents, such as raccoons or skunks, and used to include many extinct animals like the cave lion, cave leopard, cave bear, cave hyena, and even us to an extent in the form of cave men. Probably the most famous troglozine is the bat. Bats, as you might know, sleep in caves or other dark crevices during the day, and then at night go out to hunt for food. Bats are an integral part of the cave ecosystem, which we'll get back to later. Troglozines are usually found near the entrance of a cave, with bats being common in the twilight zone, an area of caves where sunlight is still able to reach the interior. But back to those troglobites, the organisms who live in complete darkness. If you analyze that statement more, well it seems to not make much sense. If you know anything about the food chain, then you know that the first step in the chain is the sun, which emits light, which of course allows plants or other autotrophs to photosynthesize to make energy so herbivores can eat that energy, and so on and so forth. But in a cave, the very first step in this process is taken away. There is no light, which means no photosynthesis, which should also equal no animals. However, troglobites have found ways around this. Because caves are below ground level, they act as nature's sewer drains. So whenever an above-ground ecosystem floods, the water washes into the cave, bringing a great harvest of organic matter, usually in the form of leaves and twigs, down into the caves. This plant matter is consumed either by microscopic decomposers, who are then consumed by small animals, or sometimes the middleman is cut out and the animal scavengers eat the flood trash themselves. Another way troglobites get nutrients is from their more outgoing neighbors. Troglozines go out of their caves in order to forage or hunt for food, and can bring what they find back to their shelter, leaving the scraps for cave decomposers. But by far the most important of these animals is the bat, and although they don't exactly bring back food, they do give something to the caves, that being guano. Piles and piles of guano, meters wide and tall. Most animals have too much dignity and too little immunity to toxins to scarf down heaps of literal bat poop. However, cave bacteria and funguses don't struggle with consuming the feces and turns it into basic foods for the small cave dwellers. These animal scavengers I keep bringing up form the middle rung in the cave food chain and are mostly composed of arthropods and other invertebrates like millipedes, shrimps, and flatworms with their main evolutionary development living in caves being their deathly pale coloration. After all, why waste time on pigment when nothing can even see you in the first place? Speaking of seeing, they don't. Most of these small animals are either nearly to fully blind, with one species of crab, Cancrochaica xenomorpha, evolved to a point where it doesn't even have eyes or eye stalks, only having two small dents where eyes would be. However, besides that, 
Arthropods are left unchanged most of the time, and are the dominant type of troglobite. This is due to the insect's already hardy nature, mostly concerning the fact they are already very small and in the very low nutrition habitat of caves don't need much energy to begin with, unlike let's say the hypothetical cave elephant. But of course, what feeds on these creatures? Most of the time, the creatures at the top of the food chain are vertebrates, who are probably the most interesting of the cave creatures. For instance, cave salamanders are the only amphibians who are troglobites. They can range from looking like your everyday salamander to this. This is an alm. They have long serpentine bodies, translucent skin, tiny eyes that they can't see through, and retain their larval gills in order to live entirely underwater. They're pretty cool. Quick alm fact, alms live in Europe and were originally discovered by local Slovenians who saw these little noodle things flopping around after the caves would flood and they would leak out. This leads to a belief that dragons live underground, and these are like their dragon fetuses. Cave fish are the other group of vertebrates deep in caves, many of which show the obvious signs of cave evolution. Many are their own unique species, however many are just slight variations of above-ground fish, who have minor mutations while they're in the egg that give them better adaptations in the caves. For instance, the Mexican tetra and the cave tetra are essentially the same animal, However, one has a genetic mutation, which just deletes the eyes. But by far the most interesting of these fish is the most unique, the elegantly named waterfall climbing cave fish. This fish has only been found in eight areas of one cave system in Thailand, and lives its entire life in total darkness, hanging on to the bottom of rapid cave water with its four feet-like fins. Presumably it waits blindly in the dark, eating anything that flows by as this obscure animal's daily life is utterly unknown to scientists. This living style of complete isolation and darkness is totally alien to what we think of as life. But so are all the lives of every other troglobite. The fact that there are animals out there living without light or any of its benefits is baffling, but still cave animals persist, once more reassuring the phrase, life finds a way. Of course, thanks to the sources and pictures I used for this video, many of which were rather hard to find. Cave animals in general aren't very well studied or documented, and going in I thought I would definitely have a shorter video on my hands, uh, but this video really surprised me on how much there was about troglofauna, and I have to leave some stuff out of the video entirely just to make sure it didn't get too long. Once more, if you can't tell, I'm still working on my microphone situation, so sorry if the audio uh, sounds a bit off. But as always, thank you for watching and see ya.